Crash Bandicoot is a much-loved character in gaming. Created by Naughty Dog and debuting on the PlayStation 1, this unofficial mascot is close to the heart of many gamers. Hello and welcome to the Cut Content Of, a show where we try to find content that you aren't able to see in some amazing games. Today we're having a look at the unused and hidden content in Crash Bandicoot, starting with the first Crash game. Before we start delving into the retail version of the game, let's go back to the 8th of March 1996, six months prior to the game's US release, when the earliest known build was created. In this build there are a lot of things that were changed or cut from the final release. A few levels exist in this build which were completely cut from the final game. One level is based inside a cavern. This level has no way to complete it and most things will kill you, including the walls, but not including the floor and the acid. Another level has crashed this end a cliff. There are loads of glitches in this level, including being able to walk under and behind the stage and walk in the air. The HUD is also broken and you cannot finish this level either. A test level exists which was used by developer and co-founder of Naughty Dog, Andy Gavin, to test enemies before placing them in an actual level. He explains, it was always very useful to have a level that was super small, hence I could process it in 3 minutes instead of 6 hours. This next cut level is set in a lava cave which was cut because it used up too much memory and the lava distracted from the orange colour of Crash. This level does have some early code and other data attached to it which can be modded into newer levels including 7 types of fruit which are limes, coconuts, lemons, strawberries, mangoes, pineapples and grapes. Each are worth this amount of fruit. Collecting 100 fruit does not give Crash an extra life. An unused item called the Yin Yang Yuck, which is similar to the icon of the same name from Naughty Dog's Way of the Warrior. In Crash Bandicoot, however, this item does absolutely nothing. The life icon has a different chin and a slightly larger nose. And an unused chunk of textures exist for the lava cave. Another unused level exists which, like the Lava Cave level, cannot be played in this version of the engine. It seems to be a reference to Donkey Kong on the NES. This final cut level is a waterfall level, which is similar to the cliff level. This level was probably going to be the level before the Ripper Roo boss fight, as it is very similar. The level even includes this cut hyena enemy. Now here's a beta version of the song from the Jungle Rollers level, which doesn't play because of a lack of code. And here's a song from the test level, which doesn't play for the same reason. The instrumentation isn't set properly so we don't know what it's actually supposed to sound like. Recognise that tune? That's because the tune is actually just part of Tchaikovsky's Dance of the Sugar Plum Fairy. Now we can go forward in time, but not all the way. First we must stop off at the build shown at E3 1996. Let's start with the first thing you see, the title screen. The title screen in this build has Crash and the logo centred and a blue gradient for the background. This screen only has a press start option instead of the menu from the final release. The level Whole Hog is much harder in this build, with things from tribesmen emerging from barricades to boomerangs flying around. The Insanity Beach theme has an intro which was cut from the final game, then leading into the classic tune that we all remember. After quitting the game to the title screen, the word Bandicoot could be mirrored from right to left. Whether this is a glitch or an easter egg, I'm not too sure. Now we can go forward to the final quarter of 1996 when the game was released to the public. There's an unused guard dog enemy in the files, known as Dog underscore C and GD10, which only has one frame of animation. Boulder levels were going to have these wooden fences as obstacles, but these obstacles were cut. The game has four unused sounds, some of which were used but cut off part way through. A whole level was cut from the game called Stormy Ascent. This level is very well known and was even added to the Insane Trilogy as free DLC. It can be accessed in the original game with these Game Shark codes. Andy Gavin has explained, it was too hard and we didn't have time to make it easier. I wish we had put it in as some kind of easter egg, as it was an awesome level, one of my favourites in the game. 
And finally, this Cortex Power Texture is used, but has a copy grouped in with the Toxic Waste files, not used by the Cortex Power level. Now we need to add a bit to our timeline and jump a year forward to the release of Crash Bandicoot 2, Cortex Strikes Back. Here's some placeholder images for the save icons which are loaded in until the saving and loading menu is accessed. These TNT sprites are grouped in with the files for the Ripperoo battle, but the ones with 7 and 8 on them are not used. There aren't any unused areas, but there are some pieces of unused scenery from older versions of levels, which are never seen in the game. The levels are Turtle Woods, The Pits, Crash Crush, Unbearable, Hanging Out, Digging It, and Behaving. In the level Totally Bare, there's two boxes that can only be seen in a level editor because they are destroyed in-game by mistake. With the level editor, it can be seen that the end of the bonus in Cold Hard Crash was originally going to be connected to the first hole after Crash falls down from the ice skating part, so the platform would have gone up to the hole. This may have been removed due to the player missing a checkpoint and some crates. In some E3 demo footage, we can see that the Ruination level had a signpost made of stone to show which pathway is easy and which is hard. The model data and object code still remain in the final version, while not being used. Next, let's look at the third game in the series, Crash Bandicoot Warped. This game had a short demo in the game Spyro the Dragon, which, when activated, would play a slideshow with a beta version of the underwater level theme, which would always get cut off. Some unused strings of text exist in the final game, saying open levels, close levels, no cheats, get relics, and get all. These were very likely used for debugging purposes. The title screen was changed almost entirely in Japan, with Crash dancing in space and a globe instead of a clock. Also, when booting the Japanese version of the game, holding down, triangle, L1 and R1 at the same time will play a bonus video. Here's some short clips from it. As you can see, it's an educational video about the animals of Australia. Go and watch it if you can find a copy. In 1999, Sony released Crash Team Racing, which had a review release with a few slight differences. The character roster had a few changes, including a different font, some different icons, and a different order. In the Engine Labs track, some tall yellow structures existed, but are only in the track preview in the final version. Also, the lap counter had a hyphen instead of a slash in the final game. In the final game, some cut placeholder sound effects exist for Pen to Penguin. Penguin Ye 1, Penguin Ye 2. The thing about these is that they weren't actually cut in the North American release, and they actually play. Here's some other sound effects which were actually cut. Crash Team Racing! There is no Crash Team Racing data on this memory card. There is no Crash Team Racing data on this memory card. Here's a list of other cut hardware related voice lines. Here's a clip from the bonus video which can be accessed by pressing L1, L2, R1 and R2 at the same time while booting up the game. The main menu was changed in the Japanese release to have Crash sitting in his cart instead of holding a trophy. Three cut items have icons on the disc, one being a spring, the second being an old icon for the bubble shield, and the third being something else. These used to do things in earlier versions of the game, but the third one did absolutely nothing. Finally, let's look at Crash Bash. Released in late 2000 and developed by Eurocom instead of Naughty Dog, this game is very similar to Mario Party. This press X to select graphic is loaded into VRAM while the player is in the first warp room, but never used. And finally, using this game shark code in the European version allows you to enter a test level while in a minigame. Pressing circle in this level will trigger an explosion animation, and pressing it again while it's still playing will stop it. Thank you for watching this episode of The Cut Content Of. You can support the show by pledging some money at patreon.com slash tcco, subscribing, sharing, turning on notifications, or just watching some of our other videos. If you'd like to, you can leave a suggestion for a future episode in the comment section below. But that's it for this episode. The Cut Content Of returns next week with an episode every week.